Oh, hello YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I'm going over my favorite romances of 2021. I already kind of went over my favorite like fantasy novels and I also want to go over my favorite romances because basically I had like a ton of books that I really really enjoyed and I wanted to like be able to talk about more of them so hence I have separated them into two different categories <laughs> and also I'd like to point out in in Los Angeles it is it is January and I am hot <laughs> like, this is a real thing it's over 70 degrees out I'm warm I'm putting my hair up this is how we're doing this video <laughs> Let's start off with fantasy. My fantasy romance pick, why not? Because you know, we just did a whole video about fantasies. Let's just keep on that like vibe. <laughs> so the reason I didn't put this in like my fantasy favorites is because I think the main idea with the story is the romance. So I'm putting it as a romance. So this is the latest book in the in the Agatar series. This is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maz. And we're following Nesta in this one, one of the Archeron sisters. And Nesta's a really interesting heroine because she is just a hot mess. She is like damaged mentally. She's been through a lot and like she has a lot of like shit she has to deal with because she is just like self-destructive to the extreme. And considering now she's immortal, she can be really destructive all she likes. And <laughs> it's like awful. And as everyone kind of suspected, of course she's gonna be with Cassie and like there's this whole romance between them. And you know what? <sighs> Here's the thing, like if you're reading this series, you have to know what you're expecting. And like I got what I was expecting out of this. It's a fey kind of action adventure drama with like, you know, sassy female characters, but not sassy, I would say more self-destructive and also kind of trying to retain autonomy after things have been done to you against your will. So it has like layers here that I thought were interesting and well explored and also like very smutty. Like holy moly, like the, the other ones, like they were in the um, YA section for quite a while even though everyone's like, wow, this is very graphically smutty for YA. <laughs> and everyone realized, oh wait, these aren't YA books. Like every time I go to a bookstore now, they're in the adult section where they should be. This one's like, oh, you thought those were smutty? Hold my beer. <laughs> like, it is so smutty. There are fluids just everywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was graphic. However, it's also graphic in the book, so be warned. <laughs> but um, fantasy romance, I, I enjoyed it, you know? Like, I knew what I was going to get into when I was getting into it, and I had fun with it. I also got a couple here that are contemporary, so let's just talk about those first. So let's talk about One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This is so fun. I loved it intensely. It's an FF romance, and it also has like a weird metaphysical time travel -y kind of situation here, but it's the time travel I like. Like, you know, like Back to the Future? where they're doing time travel shit, but like it makes no sense on purpose. Like I love that. Don't try to make time travel make sense. It doesn't. <laughs> just have it be wibbly wobbly stuff. And um, this one just lets it be wibbly wobbly. And I was like, yes, that's not the point of the book anyway. The point, of, the point isn't the time travel. The point is the romance. <laughs> so this is August and Jane. And August, she's like a cynical 20 something kind of girl. And she moves to the big city. She's like, you know, trying to move forward with her life and then she has a subway crush and it's a woman named Jane and the thing with Jane is that she has actually been on the subway since the 70s and hasn't aged ever like there's something that happened to Jane where now she's stuck on the subway forever <laughs> <laughs> so it's a really weird situation. It has like electricity involved in it. And overall, you have like a really zen zany, quirky group of characters. It feels like a big love letter to New York, honestly. And I, I appreciated all of the interesting dynamics. Like there's tons of like queer representation in this. There's trans representation. There's drag queens in here. Like there's so many different things going on and I'm obsessed with it. Also, like Jane... Jane's kind of a panty dropper. And I was like, okay, like I've been to Jane a little bit. <laughs> you have like basically a group of plucky friends trying to figure out this like really strange metaphysical situation. And also Jane and August falling in love, having romance. And I, I just really had a fun time with this. I thought it was like a good romp. It was funny, quirky. And like, they didn't try to make time travel make sense, <laughs> you know? So for all of those reasons, it's definitely making my favorites list. Now, okay, 
hear me out. I'm going to put Not My Romeo by Ilsa Madden Mills on this list. And, he, okay, here's the thing. Like, is this a good book? Arguably, no. <laughs> it's not really, like, a great book. So why am I putting this on my favorites list? I'm putting it on for this reason. One, when I got this book, I talked such shit about this book because it has the worst blurb I have ever seen. It's so bad. She is a small town librarian who does community theater and on the side designs lingerie. Like who is this heroine, right? And then you have professional football player Jack Hawk. His name is Jack Hawk, which sounds like Jack off. Like let's just be real, his name is stupid. And somehow they get together and he, he ends up signing up to do the community theater play. This multi-millionaire famous football quarterback is doing community theater with this lady. Like, what is happening? This whole book is completely absurd and I'm talking such trash about it right now. But the thing is, I like it anyway. <laughs> It'll make your brain turn off because like I said, it's absurd. It makes no sense whatsoever. But like, I'm not reading it for it to make sense. I'm reading it to be smutty and delightful and it, and it achieves both of those very well. All the rest of my picks are historical romance. I know there's a lot of them, but like I read more historical romance in 2021 than I have in any other year. So that kind of makes sense, but yeah, I got a bunch. I'm gonna start things off with Bombshell by Sarah McLean. And the thing with Sarah McLean is she's kind of an up and down author for me. Like I either really, really like her books or I'm less like, ugh with her books you know what I mean so when she's in it she's in it and I love them and this is one mm, chef's kiss she is like fully in the zone I'm obsessed with it and let's doing the heavy lifting here is like a group of heroines the hell's bells it's just a group of women in like this society and they uh have banded together essentially to you know take down the man like this guy is getting away with being an asshole well we're not letting him get away with it we're gonna ruin him you know socially <laughs> amongst other ways they also have someone who's really into dynamite and blowing things up and you know they have to hide a body like they they get into some really zany capers along the way <laughs> this one in particular is cecily and caleb and cecily is a very scandalous woman and the, the murder mystery capers of this book are intense so um cecily she like i said she's kind of scandalous she takes down men she gets into herself into sticky situations which she can usually get out of and then you have caleb and um they kind of have a pass with each other Caleb is Cecily's sister's best friend and they like own a bar together and someone's got to keep Cecily out of trouble. Caleb kind of volunteers. However, Caleb has got a secretive past and like, you know, it kind of comes into play in this book. They have to get him out of trouble and like, you know, enter the hell's bells to save the day. And I loved it. Ah, like I'm so obsessed with these women. I'm so excited. I've already pre-ordered book two of this series called Heartbreaker. I, I love it. I'm so ex obsessed with this and I'm so excited to continue on with the series. It's really, really good. In 2021, I finally read the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn, mainly just because I watched the show and enjoyed it quite a bit. And the thing with Julia Quinn is that I had written this author off. I had read a few books by Julia Quinn in the past and did not like them. I thought they were boring. And now that I've read a lot more historical romance in general, I can appreciate them more. And uh, I, I really, really like the Bridgerton series. I marathoned all eight books of that. I marathoned it. <laughs> and then I marathoned like the series that came after that was like adjacent to it. I still have to read the prequel series. Like I read so many books by Julia Quinn last year. It was bananas. And personally for me in the Bridgerton series, my favorite book is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. I could have just picked like the first book of the Bridgerton series, but I decided to pick my favorite book instead. So this is Colin and Penelope's story. And um, I think this one has the most zany antics of it. Um, I, I liked Colin and Penelope's kind of friends to lovers situation. And I liked how they both kind of supported each other. Like I think Colin could have been a cooler guy, but like, you know, overall he's pretty dope. And you have to deal with the Featheringtons who's Penelope's family and they're all like lunatics. And Colin's like, oh God, I'm marrying into that, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I have two zany families. And uh, there's lots of zany antics. You get into like, 
the identity of Lady Whistledown, who is like a gossip columnist. And uh, there's a lot of like, uh, there's blackmail and all kinds of zaniness here. And I really like their like relationship with each other because it's kind of childhood friends to lovers. And I love that. I love a friends to lovers. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it. I like friends to lovers more than enemies to lovers. There you go. There you go. I said it. I said what I said. <laughs> now the rest of my historical romances on this list, these are all new to me authors. They're not necessarily new authors, but they're new to me. These are all authors I read for the first time in 2021 and I'm now obsessed with. I read Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase and I was obsessed with this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If you want like an enemies to lovers romance, like this is it. Now this book does have a trope I don't like usually, which is the no dick is that good trope, where this guy is a legit bastard. We're dealing with Sebastian. He's the Marquess of Dane. And he is an asshole. Like, he is the worst. And the thing that makes me okay with that is, is love interest Jessica, because she is just diabolical. And if someone's gonna be an asshole, the woman paired with this person can't be someone he's just hurting all the time it has to be someone who's gonna fight back and be like oh you want to play this way I can play this way and for him just to be very scared of her <laughs> and Lady Jessica is terrifying in her diabolical nature they're both just like crazy and I'm like obsessed with it um like I will say slight as a spoilers here you have been warned um at one point he does something really messed up to Jessica and he's like, what are you gonna do, shoot me? And she's like, yup. She comes over and shoots him. She, sh the heroine shoots the hero with a gun, like bang, bang, shoot. Like that happens and they get married anyway. <laughs> so if you want some diabolical people being diabolical to each other, but also in like a sexy romantic way, like this is the book for you. I just appreciated like the sheer like craziness of this. Like I had never read a book where the heroine literally shot the hero and then they got married anyway. <laughs> So um, I really, really like this book. I have been unhappy that I have not found another Loretta Chase book that I liked. So far, this is the only one, but this one is like very good. So maybe it's just setting the bar too high. I'm not sure, but I love it. It's great. It's diabolical and smutty and fun. I absolutely loved Hit Me With Your Best Scott by Suzanne Enoch. This is also an author I am crazy obsessed with. It, I found them in December and I have just been marathoning books. I wanna read all of the books by this author. They're all like smutty Highlander romances and like that is my kink. I like a smutty Highlander romance, okay? <laughs> the whole like premise of this series, there was an English woman and a Scotsman, right? They met, they fell in love. She had a lot of money, he didn't have any money, but like they fell in love, they got married. Now the, the marriage is super estranged. They haven't seen each other in like 18 years. And as she was leaving him, she's like, you're gonna sign this paperwork. And basically all of our sons have to marry English women before our daughter gets married. Otherwise you get no more of my money. I hold all the purse strings here, suck it, bitch. And the guy's like, fine, he signs it. 18 years have gone by, uh-oh, the daughter's engaged. This contract is coming into play. So all the sons have to come down to England and find brides. This is Cole, he's the oldest McTaggart brother, and uh, Persephone, who is a very scandalous woman. She's an actress, can you believe? <laughs> and I really, really liked Persephone as a heroine. She is so cool. She's very sassy. She's not saving her vagina for a special occasion. She's very much just like, oh, well, I like this guy and I can do what I want. She's very uh, free-spirited and like progressive for her time period. Also, there's a murder mystery. Someone's trying to kill her and Cole has to like stop the murder. <laughs> so there's all that going on as well. I think personally, in my own smutty opinion, it's the best smut of the series. She completely just like exceeds expectations in every way. We've all seen that trope in so many like murder mystery romances where the woman's like, oh, I don't want guards. I can't have people following him around. I don't want to do that, which is so dumb. It's like someone's trying to kill you, lady. Like this is not the moment to be self-righteous. And Persephone is not. She's like, oh, someone's trying to kill me. Like I'll take all the guards you have. I don't, I don't care if some dude follows me around. Like that's fine. Like it's better than getting murdered. She's great and I, I will fight people. <laughs> like I love her so much. And I just want to read so many more books by this author. I'm obsessed. So definitely had to make my list just because this book made me like obsessed with the author. 
I absolutely adored The Ray Kale of Roth by Emily Howard. And you know what? I liked it even better than the other book of this series, The Beast of Bezek. I, it's just so fun. This is Isabel. She is a very feisty, d dynamic woman, and she marries this Marquess. Mind you, his name is Winter, which is silly, but we're gonna move past his silly name. <laughs> so she marries Winter, and like he just kind of dumps her in the countryside and goes back to town and is living his life for reasons which are stupid, but we're not gonna get into that. And uh, in the meantime, she's like, oh, well, I'm going to live my best life. So she um, becomes an expert markswoman. She is an expert writer. And also she started basically Regency era Cosmopolitan magazine. She runs a sex advice column. Mind you, is she having any sex? No, but she knows a lot about it. <laughs> and this book also has that trope of no dick is that good. However, I freaking loved Isabel so much that I'm letting it pass. <laughs> Do I think Isabel probably could have done better with Winter? Yeah, Winter's kind of just a himbo. He's really dumb. He's just so dumb. Like, all of his problems are just self-invented. He could have just gotten over shit by having a conversation with someone, like, 10 years ago. He could have just had a conversation and been over shit. He's just awful. The worst guy. But Isabel is so dope as a heroine that I, I really, really love the book. I was so excited to keep turning the page even though I hated Winter. <laughs> this is getting a big heavy assist from the good heroine because if it didn't have a good heroine, I would have despised this. But Isabel is so cool that I ended up like really loving it. I even tabbed it. I even tabbed it. I so rarely tab anything. And I'll read you the, the quote because it was so good. Fate had given her a crate of lemons and she planned to drown her scoundrel of a husband in lemonade. Love her intensely. Love Isabel. Last up, I have Her Wicked Marquess by Stacey Reed. All the books in this series are fantastic. This is the middle book, book two, but it's the first book I read, so I put it in. Uh, My Darling Duke is the prequel to this. Also very good. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling that I liked, and I don't like Beauty and the Beast retellings. So that being said, obviously I was going to get into this. Um, this one is a... Uh, it's kind of a romantic drama. It has like a dash of Count of Monte Cristo vibes. And I kind of like how she builds relationships between characters in her books. A lot of the time, uh, these characters take time to get to know each other. There's not like an insta love, like maybe it's an insta attraction, but it's not an insta love. Like they get to know each other, they kind of become friends and then they become lovers. So I like how she progresses relationships. We have Marianne and her parents are trying to marry her off to this guy she doesn't want to get married to. So she's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to start a rumor. I'm going to start a rumor and like ruin myself and that I won't have to get married. Oh, someone saw Nicholas, the, the Marquess of Rothbury, climbing out of a window at a party. Oh, um, it was my window. I was the person. Ha ha ha. He was climbing out of my window. Oh boy, he kisses so good. <laughs> like, she just basically makes up a big rumor that she's ruined, essentially. And uh, eventually Nicholas finds out. He's like, huh, I don't remember climbing into that lady's window. <laughs> So they kind of, you know, meet that way. And uh, I really like how their relationship kind of progresses. He kind of then starts sneaking into a room every night and they get to be friends and like learn about each other. And like there's a big trust growing before they become intimate with each other, which I appreciate. But Nicholas has dark secrets. And in the past, something terrible happened to this girl that he loved like as a sister. And um, he's been out there ruining guys ever since. The people who did this to her, he's been out to murder them. Not murder, but like ruin them to the point where a lot of them have killed themselves. So, um, you know, hella revenge. And mixing up Marianne in this situation is not safe. But like, of course he falls in love with her and then like she gets in mixed into like this seedy revenge story that's going on in the background. And reading this book made me kind of obsessed with Stacey Reed. I got so many of her back catalog books. So just for like finding an author I'm obsessed with now and wanting to get all of their books, this had to make the list. All right, so those are some of my favorite romances of 2021. I'm sure there's others that maybe I have forgotten, but these are all the ones that like I thought of off the top of my head where I'm like, yes, these are the ones that I keep thinking about constantly throughout the year. So uh, let me know in the comments down below, uh, what are some of your favorite romances you read in 2021? Um, did you find any new authors you're now obsessed with? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you wanna see more videos, make sure you subscribe.
and I'll see you guys soon.